In the last two episodes, we have explored how microcode defines the instruction set of our CPU. But so far, we haven't made any use of the three flags of our CPU, that is, the negative, the carry out, and the zero flag, in short, N, C, and Z flag. Today, let's analyze how we can use these flags to implement conditional branching, bit shifting, and word operations. And along with this video, I am releasing the complete microcode of the instruction set on GitHub. As always, the link is in the description. Let's get started. Whenever our CPU's arithmetic and logic unit, which is just a fancy name for a simple adder, is outputting its results onto the bus, it also updates the flex register inside the control logic. This happens simultaneously since we have tied together the EO and the FI control lines. So far, our microcode doesn't make use of these flags. We have written the same microcode to our EEPROM for each of the eight different flags combinations. Just to remind ourselves, consider a simple instruction like LDI. Independently of the state of the N, C and Z flag, the control logic should execute these five microsteps in a totally linear fashion, like so. To make sure that this is indeed the case, rewrite these same linear steps into our EEPROM for each flag combination, like so. Let us now consider a branching instruction, like BEQ, for our branch on equal, which really means branch on zero flag Z equals one. In order to achieve this behavior, we need to distinguish the z equals 0 and the z equals 1 case in the microcode of this instruction. For z equals 0, we do not want the control logic to branch to the address following the BEQ opcode in memory. Thus, we simply increment the program counter twice with count enable memory enable and end the instruction. But if z equals 1, BEQ should behave exactly like a jump to address instruction, JPA, we have already discussed. So that's really all there is to conditional branches. The same technique can be used to implement various bit shifting operations on our simple adder. Bit shifting is really important since it paves the way to multiplication and division. Left shifting and right shifting is equal to multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2, respectively. Let's consider the instruction LSL for logic shift left, shifting the content of A to the left by one step. In this diagram, I've omitted the first three microsteps because they are just fetching an opcode. Shifting left can be implemented really easily since we only need to add A to A. So step three copies A to B and step four outputs the sum to the bus, which is equivalent to A multiplied by two. It starts to get interesting when we try and implement LSR for logic shift right. We can't just divide A by 2 here. Instead, the idea is that we shift the content of A 8 times to the left and use the carry flag to rotate the bits we are shifting out at the most significant end back into the least significant bit. This procedure must be smart enough to react to the state of the carry flag and adjust the microcode accordingly. Let's take a look at the steps. A out, B in, again copies A to B. E out, E S, adds the inverse of A to A. The result of this operation is always 255. The important point here is that this reliably clears the carry out flag of our flags register. Thus we have c equals 0 now and stay on the top line of our microcode. Next, we simply add a to a. Now it's getting interesting. In case we don't have an overflow, c remains 0 and we perform the same step as before. But if we had an overflow condition with c equals 1, we would execute a different path as indicated by the bottom arrow. If we repeat this operation 8 times, we end up with the desired result. As an example, let's consider a concrete value in A. After the first step, we have shifted everything to the left. Note that we didn't get an overflow yet. But with the next step, we have shifted a1 into the carry flag and will execute not only an add a to a in the next step, but we will also be adding 1 via the carry inline ec. 
Next, we have c equals 1 again. Let's keep going until we end up with the initial content of a appearing shifted to the right after 8 steps. Just like so. And as a last flags example, let's take a look at the ADW instruction, adding a to the word at an absolute address in memory. The plan here is to first add a to the LSB of that word and then only increment its MSB if we had an overflow. So this instruction also needs to be able to sort of react to the carry flag. As you can see, this happens in the last step of the microcode. But let's take the time and go through it step by step. As always, the first three steps move the content of the program counter into the MAR, exposing the opcode. RAM out instruction in count enable moves this opcode into our instruction register and increments the program counter and the MAR, exposing the LSB of our target address. The next three steps move this target address into the MAR so that now we can access the words LSB, like so. The steps 6 and 7 move this value up into the B register, add it to A and store the result back into memory. Note that now the carry flag contains the overflow information. And on step 8 we increment our MAR to expose the word MSB and also load the value minus 1 into the B register. Next we move this word MSB into A. Now we are ready to do nothing if C equals 0 or if C equals 1 we add 1 and write back the result into RAM. This is it. We could go on and on and consider the entire instruction set now, but I really just wanted to give you a general overview of the relevant ideas so you can further explore the microcode by yourself if you are interested in a specific instruction. In any case, the link to the complete microcode of the full instruction set is in the description. In my next videos we will finally start programming this machine, which I'm really looking forward to. So stay tuned, take care. Bye.